the most important topics we will discuss about the respiratory. So one of the respiratory system, the important questions is a paid question from, from any MRCS part examinations is oxygen dissociation curve. So what does it mean? It means we have a make and graphs on x-axis and the y-axis. Along the x-axis, we have to put the partial pressure of oxygen and along the vertical line or the y-axis, we have to measure the saturations of the hemoglobin. So depending on the changes of partial pressure of oxygen, how the saturations of hemoglobin occurs, that curve we call the oxygen dissociative curve and it's kind of S-curve. So this kind of basic things is not so important for our MRCS part A. We have to discuss or we have to know about to understand when that sh curve shift to the right and what is the reason the curve shift to the left. So there's some mammonics here. So it's a very famous mammonics. I hope you already know about this one. This is called the cadet shifts to right. Cadet shifts to shifts to right. So this cadet is the mammonics. So for the C it stands for the car partial pressure of carbon dioxide. A stands for the acidosis because when the partial pressure of carbon dioxide arises that reacted with uh, water, carbon dioxide plus water and Henderson Hasselhoff equations we already know about with the carbonic anhydrase there will be increased bicarbonate, increased, uh, increased hydrogen ion. So increased hydrogen ion means it's kind of acidotic environment or pH will be lower. So C for carbon dioxide, A for acidotic, D for 2,3-DPG. This is a 2,3-DPG. What does it mean? It's a protein. It is increased during exercise and it can be found in the musculatures. So increased 2,3-DPG has an increasing uh, take the carbon, take the oxygen from the hemoglobin. So increased 2,3-DPG and E means elevated and T for the temperature. So raised temperature. This is this cadet when you find questions, the cadet, this is the reason the question the dissociative curve will be shift to the right. Now for the most exam purposes, uh, most of the time they will give high altitude. So high altitude means there's a low temperature and low partial pressure of carbon dioxide. Why? Or even the alkaline. Exactly both are same thing. So they will give you a scenario that a mountaineer or the, any trekker who are hiking on the mountain, what happens to his uh, oxygen dissociative curve because when the patient is hiking above patient will have a more respiratory rate more respiratory rate that's mean more carbon dioxide are getting out of the body so partial pressure of carbon dioxide will be lowered and because of high exhaustions of the carbon dioxide means the body pH will be higher I mean alkaline that would be so everything will be emphasized that patient will have a lift shift of oxygen dissociation curve. Another question is most commonly they might give you that a patient has been diagnosed with a sickle cell anemia or fetal hemoglobin and or the carbaminohemoglobin most probably a patient has been rescued from any barn area there was a fire occurred and rescued have rescue team put the patients to your emergency department you are taking the patients so there's a long scenario they will give. Ultimately, the key word is that the patient has been rescued from any burning center, from any firehouse. So there would be a possibility of carboxyhemoglobin or methemoglobin toxicity. And if the patient is already been discussed that they has a fetal hemoglobin, for example, hydrops fetalis, uh, patient has Rh positive, babies are positive from your rh negative mother they will give a scenario so that also includes the patient has been suffering from has more concentrated of fetal hemoglobin so finally they will just ask you what would what would you expect regarding the carbon uh, oxygen dissociation curve shifting so the answer would be again the shifting that would be on the left side so Though the mammonics is very much common cadet for the right side, but for the my experience and if you solve the recall questions, we have to uh, very put more emphasis on the causes which causing the left shift of the carboxyhemoglobin dissociative curve. Okay, another important thing is polycythemia. 
that you have to be remembered this one because uh, this is important to shifting the oxygen dissociative, dissociative curve, okay? Okay. So another interesting thing they will give you regarding the TLCO. What is that TLCO? So is in simple word, if you like to put it in a way that how the carbon monoxide has been shifting through the basement membrane of the pulmonary endothelium. So you know we have a no regarding the membrane, what is the layer of the pulmonary endothelium? So the gas exchange occur between the alveolum and the pulmonary vessels. So what are the factors that increasing the TLCO and what are the factors decreasing the TLCO? So in short, in short, we have to remember anything that disrupts the endothelial membrane that will de increases, um, that will really decreases the TLCO, and anything, uh, for example, the blood volume has been increased, so TLCO will be increased. Polycythemia, more hemoglobin are situated or more RBC on the blood, so that will be increasing the TLCO. So anything like pulmonary fibrosis kyphosis, uh, pulmonary edema, that will decrease the TLCO. Another one is pulmonary compliance. So compliance means, for example, if we give you a balloon, what is compliance? Compliance is something like that. You give a pressure, a single pressure. So example, this is a balloon. Think about this is a balloon. So you give one unit of here between inside this balloon so it will be increases in size right from here to here so depending on its elasticity it might get increased up to here and for example you take an another balloon which is very stiff in size to inflate the balloon from this area up to this area you have to give twice pressure inside it so inflate the same air inflate the same balloon if you have to give more air that means the compliance has been reduced compliance has been reduced so so that is is that we call the lung compliance so for the exam purpose they will give you when the lung compliance will be increased and when the lung compliance will be decreased for example pulmonary fibrosis and copd patients in that case the compliance is supposed to be get lowered when in during the old age in the old age the compliance will be higher so the because of the recoiling functions of the lung will property that will be reduced significantly over the age that's why the compliance increased with age so what this is the very important and highlighted thing in the respiratory system area